Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Dr. Ashok Agrawal from Cleveland Clinic, and um, I will be giving a lecture today on MOSI, a new hope for infertile men. So let's begin. The objectives of my talk is to discuss uh, about male infertility and semen quality. What are the causes of male infertility? What is uh, the oxidative stress and how it impacts on male infertility? What are oxidative and reductive stress? Define what is MOSI, how to measure uh, oxidative stress? What are the treatment for patients who are diagnosed with MOSI? and the role of antioxidants studies that we have conducted and leave you with some take home messages. Male factor infertility is responsible for almost half of all causes of infertility. Around the world, almost 200 million couples are experiencing infertility problem and about half of them is due to the male factor. And in the United States, one in seven couple is trying to get pregnant and they cannot do so even after one year of unprotected sex. Um, in the around the world, almost 15 percent of couples are infertile. So this is a worldwide problem and uh, this is increasing as uh, we are moving into the 21st century. The main reasons for this increase or explosion of problems of male infertility is due to the changes in our society over the last 20, 30 years, where many men and women of young age are waiting to get married. They are waiting until for women ages of 30, 35, even 40, and for men 40, 45, 50 is uh, not uncommon, but certainly a uh, very few of them or very small number are getting married in the mid mid 20s or early 20s which was the trend about 30 40 years ago there is a decline in semen quality as we see in large number of studies from different parts of the world and there is an explosion of sexually transmitted diseases such as gonorrhea chlamydia urea plasma in younger population in uh, in men and women in the reproductive age and there are a lot of environmental pollutants such as phthalates bisphenol pesticide endocrine disruptors which are really influencing uh, the the health of uh, men and women around the world and uh, then there is occupational exposure because of pollutants which are there coming from the factories coming from the cars coming from all kinds of uh, vehicles uh, which are polluting our environment the air that we breathe then the lifestyle factors which have become really prominent in the uh, last uh, 10 20 years because of uh, the explosion of uh, technology uh, the the the, the uh, various kinds of uh, smartphones and uh, television and programs uh, and facebook all of these things uh, have led to a more sedentary lifestyle people are not going people are not walking people are not meeting each other they're not talking to each other there is an explosion of obesity all over the world and uh, a cell phone use which we know now uh, can also generate electromagnetic radiation which can cause uh, a variety of health effect including effect on the reproduction increase in stress not only because of the pandemic, but even uh, otherwise, there is a lot of stress, uh, use of alcohol, smoking, unhealthy diet, all of these diabetes, which is one of the most prominent diseases these time life and erectile dysfunction. All of these combined are causing an explosion in the causes related to male infertility. If you can look at these figures, you can see there is a significant decline in all parameters of semen. And this is a study which was conducted over the course of uh, 40 years. And they have shown there is a 52% decline, for example, in the concentration, almost 60% decline in the total number of sperm count and morphology. All of these things are declining in different parts of the world. There is tremendous amount of data supporting this. To evaluate male infertility, the typical uh, um, guidelines uh, are 
that there is a reproductive history taken, then physical examination is performed by the specialist, and then various investigation, including the laboratory investigations such as semen test, uh, routine test, and then advanced test, and then the blood test, the hormone and the endocrine profile, and radiographical test. So this is a, more like a, a standard workflow for evaluating couples with the uh, infertility where male partner is examined. In the laboratory for semen analysis, uh, we examine uh, under the microscope as well as we look at physical properties of the sperm without uh, the need for microscopes, such as measuring the volume, the pH, the appearance, the viscosity, the count, motility, uh, morphology, all of these things are examined under the microscope. If uh, there is, uh, uh, we are unable to diagnose the reason for poor semen quality or infertility in the men, then there are a variety of advanced sperm function tests such as sperm DNA fragmentation, reactive oxygen species, acrosome reaction, sperm zona pellucida binding, and mitochondrial function. Many of these tests can be used to look at uh, the changes which are more at the molecular level, the changes which are at, uh, 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 at the level that cannot be examined by a microscopic examination. So these are called advanced tests, and they are, uh, they are required in... Uh, in selected cases of patient which uh, cannot uh, really be uh, diagnosed by a simple semen analysis. Oxidative stress is uh, one of such advanced tests. Here, if you look at the at, uh, oxidative stress, it is essentially a balance between good and bad oxidants. Simply, we require very small amounts of reactive oxygen species or free radicals such as superoxide anion, hydrox, hydrogen peroxide, or hydroxyl radical are some of the examples of such type of oxidate, oxidants. They are required in small quantities by the sperm for a variety of functions such as maturation, signal transduction, preparation of a sperm for motility and capacitation, acrosome reaction, and fertilization. This is an essential feature before the sperm are ready for fertilization. However, when there is an unregulated amount of reactive oxygen species being produced that results in oxidative stress or an imbalance due to lipid peroxidation, DNA damage, and apoptosis, the reason for that is the exogenous sources of this are radiation, toxins, smoking, alcohol and the endogenous or within the cell within the uh, within the body there are various uh, reasons uh, various causes such as leukocytes immature spermatozoa or clinical conditions such as varicocele which can increase the temperature and generate cause hypoxia and that results in an imbalance resulting in uh, the, the unregulated production of reactive oxygen species so the main sources of reactive oxygen species in human semen are white blood cells as well as immature spermatozoa or abnormal spermatozoa with residual cytoplasm. A activated leukocytes can produce almost thousand times more reactive oxygen species than spermatozoa. This is the mechanism of uh, production of reactive oxygen species by abnormal spermatozoa as you see on the left side of the screen, uh, which are immature, abnormal, where there is a retention of the middle piece or the cytoplasm, excessive cytoplasm, which contains the enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, which uh, changes into NADPH, NADPH oxidase, resulting in uh, production of reactive oxygen species. And that can cause apoptosis in maturing germ cell. It can also cause damage to the DNA and proteins and lipids and essentially reduce the fertility of spermatozoa. Uh, leukocytes which are also present in the semen in small quantities but when they are activated they can generate immense amount of uh, reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species 
and uh, cause oxidative stress through a process of lipid peroxidation and uh, that can cause uh, damage to the motility, damage to the viability, capacitation, acrosome reaction, all important elements of uh, preparing the sperm for fertilization and, and causing uh, a decline in fertility. So let's talk about what is oxidative stress or reduct and reductive stress. These are two different terminology. So when there is uh, oxidants uh, um, uh, which uh, can impact on the lifestyle or due to infection or lack of uh, antioxidant, when they are higher, it results in oxidative stress, as you see. When uh, there is uh, antioxidant which are taken uh, uh, that can result into a balance and that is uh, a condition which uh, is where the body or the spermatozoa should be. But uh, at the same time, if there is too much of antioxidants, it can result in infertility due to the reductive stress. So this is also harmful. Too much antioxidant results in reductive stress, which can also cause damage to the spermatozoa. So problem in detecting oxidative and reductive stress is that there are a variety of techniques that are available, but those techniques are mostly not standardized. They are not easy to do. They are not uh, really standardized for laboratory investigation, for diagnostic investigation. Um, the reductive stress, same thing. It plays its role in diseases such as Alzheimer and in embryo development. But the problem with these uh, condition is that we don't know what is normal. Well, we conducted some studies recently and we have been able to define the normal and abnormal levels of oxidative stress and reductive stress. The idiopathic male infertility is uh, a condition where uh, these patients uh, who have idiopathic in, uh, infertility, they have uh, abnormal semen characteristic without an identifiable cause and the absence of female factor. So idiopathic is essentially a term where we don't know what is going on. So it's a, it's a condition which uh, uh, the clinicians are not able to diagnose the reason for the patient's uh, infertility. The patient has abnormal semen characteristic without uh, any real underlying reason that can be identified and the woman is completely normal. So this is called uh, idiopathic uh, male infertility. The concept of male oxidative stress infertility, which I wanted to tell you, is uh, oxidative stress uh, plays a significant role in the etiology of male infertility. There are small quantities of seminal reactive oxygen species, as I said, are required. That 30 to 80% of infertile men have high levels of reactive oxygen species. This is a potentially treatable condition. So the concept of male oxidative stress infertility or MOSI, this is the short name for this uh, clinical condition where male reproductive potential cannot be adequately uh, assessed, cannot be evaluated by uh, if seminal oxidative stress is not examined. We have no consensus at this time on how to measure oxidative stress or a diagnostic terminology. Therefore, we propose the term male oxidative stress infertility or MOSI. Now let's look at the global incidence of male oxidative stress infertility. So if you look at it in this diagram, almost 200 million couples have been reported to have infertility around the world. And if you look at uh, the, uh, the diagram below, about 50% uh, are due to the female, 30% due to both male and female, and 20% pure male. So if you combine the male factor, it comes out to be about 50% total or about 100 million. And then if you look at the right side of uh, this uh, panel, you will see that uh, idiopathic infertility occupies almost 50%. So 
in half of the patients with male factor, we are not able to diagnose what is the condition. And when we conducted studies, we found that in 80% of patients who have idiopathic infertility or almost 40 million men, we can diagnose them as having MOSI or male oxidative stress infertility. Now, the oxidative stress can be measured using a new device called myoxys. And we can measure what we call as oxidation reduction potential. So myoxys is uh, a device uh, which is called male infertility oxidative system. It's an easy, reproducible, and very um, um, inexpensive where we place the sensor in the in the sense in the socket, load 30 microliter of semen, insert the sensor, sample reaches the reference cell, and the testing begins. It takes only four minutes, no training is required, it gives you the results. So it's very, very easy. And this uh, technology became available about four or five years ago. And we have conducted uh, the validation of it uh, uh, in the beginning. And now um, it is being used all over the world. Uh, many, many different uh, clinics uh, have been using and uh, many articles, research articles, both uh, from different labs as well as multi-center studies have been conducted validating uh, the use of ORP by myoxys for patients with male infertility. So the diagnosis of MOSI can be um, by measuring oxidation reduction potential. Uh, it's a clinical biomarker for classifying MOSI. It takes into account the level of both oxidant and reductants. It is an adjunct test to conventional semen analysis. Myoxys is easy, reproducible, and cost-effective. We actually had uh, this term MOSI um, uh, actually registered uh, from the uh, from FTC. So there is a trademark on this term. We are offering this test to our patients for the last uh, four years and have done thousands of patients uh, with uh, this condition. We conducted a multi-center study of ORP or oxidation reduction potential in males with abnormal semen characteristic. Here we asked uh, to investigate reproducibility and reliability of ORP as a marker of his pump quality across different fertility centers. This was a multi-center study conducted in nine different institutions across the world. And what we have here is, uh, these are the participating institutions. And this is a study design with almost 2,000, uh, 2,100 uh, subjects who were divided by normal semen and abnormal semen based on WHO uh, criteria, as you can see. And we looked at uh, all the parameters of the sperm, such as concentration, motility, total sperm count, progressive motility, and morphology. And here are the results. The results, uh, you can see that the ORP values for normal group is uh, significantly lower compared to abnormal group. And we were able to define the cutoff value of 1.34 millivolt per million sperm per ml as uh, the cutoff value for identifying normal and abnormal patients uh, with uh, ORP in their semen sample. And we conducted a, a receiver operating characteristic curve or rock analysis, which established the sensitivity as 98% and the positive predictive value of almost 95% for ORP. And here is the distribution of ORP values in infertile men, as you can see, with normal and abnormal semen characteristics. Again, we were able to establish that there is a significant uh, uh, um, differentiation in the levels of uh, ORP in patients who have abnormal semen parameters or those who are non-normal zoospermic or those who are asthenozoospermic. And you can see the ones in the uh, red color dots are those which are abnormal either for um, more than one semen parameters in the first box or just uh, non-normal zoospermic in the second or poor motility in the third one. 
And we then uh, went ahead and wrote a publication about three years ago, which was published uh, in a uh, high impact journal. We had 90 authors, specialists from six continents and 26 countries who joined us to, to uh, propose these new terminology and clinical practice guideline for management of idiopathic male infertility. Now, once we know that there is MOSI, we can treat these patients with antioxidants. So we conducted a clinical trial on antioxidants and uh, the study included 148 infertile men. They are treated with three tablets twice daily for three months. And this is the composition of antioxidant before and af uh, after antioxidant. We examined the semen analysis, count, motility, progressive motility, viability, morphology, ORP, and sperm DNA fragmentation uh, testing. And this is uh, a experimental design for this clinical trial. We gave these patients um, um, antioxidant, which is called FH Pro for men. Uh, this is uh, manufactured by a company called Fair Heaven Health here in the United States. And these are the ingredients of this particular supplement. And uh, for the entire trial, the patient uh, were given for six months, uh, one, uh, one bottle for each uh, month. And the beneficial effects of antioxidants are well known by a variety of studies that have been conducted so far. And uh, everything is scientifically uh, demonstrated in studies, such as uh, the role of vitamin C and vitamin E in improving the sperm count or lycopene in improving the lipid peroxidation and DNA damage. And uh, for example, uh, um, the addition of zinc or selenium, which can improve the motility and morphology. So ma many of these ingredients are uh, very well studied. Um, the study included 148 subjects and uh, about uh, um, 120 or 119 of them uh, had idiopathic infertility. Uh, idiopathic patients with confirmed seminal oxidative stress were 108 or 91% of these patients had uh, what we call as uh, MOSI. So uh, out of 148, 119 were patients and the remaining of uh, uh, remaining individuals were controlled uh, with normal fertility, with proven, uh, proven uh, fertility. And these are the results here. Uh, this is before and after the treatment you can look at uh, the results. There's a significant increase in all the semen parameters, concentration, the yellow bar is before treatment and the green bar after the treatment. There is this almost 56% increase in concentration. There is 16% increase in total motility and almost 143% increase in progressive motility in patients who were treated with antioxidant. Also, there was a 86% increase in normal morphology. There was a significant decline of almost 40% in bad oxidation reduction potential levels. Also, sperm DNA fragmentation uh, levels go, went down to 20, by 21% after treatment with these. Uh, so our key finding for the first time, our study sheds light on possible treatment of idiopathic male infertility and unexplained male infertility using an antioxidant formulation. Antioxidant supplementation improves the semen parameter and reduces oxidative stress in idiopathic infertile men. Antioxidant supplementation has beneficial effect on sperm function proteins associated with fertility at molecular level. This has been shown in a subsequent separate clinical trial that we conducted, and the results are not shown here. And the last finding is FH Pro for men is a promising antioxidant formulation for medical treatment of idiopathic infertile men with oxidative stress. European Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology recommended that oxidative stress is one of the main factors contributing to sperm DNA damage and that the men should be evaluated for adverse lifestyle factors, including smoking, alcohol consumption, um, exercise and body weight and evaluated for DNA integrity, sperm DNA integrity 
uh, for uh, to evaluate. And then ORP is uh, is an accurate test to measure seminal oxidative stress and validate the accuracy of uh, manual semen analysis as well. So our main messages for all of you is that male reproductive potential cannot be fully evaluated if we are not checking the oxidative stress. So it is very, very important that oxidative stress testing is conducted, specifically in patients who have idiopathic male infertility, MOSI, or male oxidative stress infertility is a novel descriptor for infertile men with abnormal semen characteristic and oxidative stress with no female factor. ORP is a if efficient, inexpensive, very sensitive uh, test which can be used to measure oxidative stress in a doctor's office or in a laboratory. We need uh, clinical guidelines to avoid possible overuse of antioxidants by the patients because overuse of antioxidants can be harmful to the patients in terms of their semen quality or fertility. So that uh, finishes uh, my presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you.